Hey everybody, it's Jork. Welcome back. Hope you're doing great wherever you are in the world. I had this question come up over the weekend uh, just before making this video. It's come up every few months. Haven't made a video about it. And people have talked about or asked me this question. How many trips or scouting trips should it take to get to a country, a city, or a place you want to live before you feel like okay, you know enough, you've been there long enough to be able to see it to where you know whether this is a good place to live or not. So I'll do a spoiler alert. The only way you're really going to know is to move there and live there day to day. But that's not the question that was asked. So the question was asked, you know, can you do it sight unseen just by watching videos, reading blogs, uh, watching other people's content and opinions? Uh, I don't... How shall I put it? Without being hypocritical, yes, I'd like to have people watch videos, but no, I'm not a good um, opinion maker for what you want to do and you and your family, uh, your partner, spouse, whomever that may be looking to move someplace. You really have to go there. And I have a couple of recommendations that I want to make for you. Is One, go during the high tourist season. Unless it's a country that doesn't get a lot of tourism, go during the high tourist season, try to get two to three weeks there, see what it's like when it's absolute madness, when the public transportation is jammed up, accommodations are kind of hard to get, um, you know, do the rental, does the, excuse me, the restaurant prices get jacked up during the tourist season, um, what are the people like, what are the locals like during tourist season? Uh, what are the tourists like? Um, you know, can you live in that environment if it's a jam-packed town, whether it be a beach town or a major city, when there's just more congestion and hard to get around? Also, I would try to go back for two to three weeks, if possible, in the slow season, whether that be winter time or off season, whatever that would be, the opposite of the high tourist season, whatever country you're considering. Go there. Can you live there when there's less tourists? Um, and what I mean by that is uh, most people are going to say, well, if, duh, of course, it's going to be easier to get around, easier to get into restaurants. Depending on where you live, absolutely true, but there may be less amenities, meaning if you live in a beach town in a, a certain country, they may close down some of the restaurants in the off season when there's no tourists. So that will change uh, your mindset a little bit. But go during the high tourist season, give it a shot, try to get around the city or country. Do it in the off season, the opposite season. So you'll have more locals, less tourists, uh, maybe a little more authenticity in some of the places. Um, and if you're doing both of those, go to the grocery store as well. I think most of us uh, that do YouTube content on moving somewhere else, hit, hit a grocery store. There are hundreds of groups now, uh, whether it be social media, Facebook, Reddit, you name it, you can down a lot of rabbit holes, YouTube on places to, to go, the pros and the cons, the good and the bad and the ugly, on just about any place on the planet. So you can, although it's not your opinion, you can listen to others and maybe try to determine what you can take from them and what you don't need from them on where you may want to live. It is important and it's something that we didn't think about when we were moving from the US to Portugal is probably spending a little more time thinking about the government. What I mean by that, the social, economic, geopolitical, the bureaucracy, which I throw into the government, you know, what's going on with the, the government situation, meaning, you know, who's running the country? What's the leadership look like? What's it been? What is it now? Uh, can you read the tea leaves or read any or see anything where things may be changing? So you may decide you want to move to Italy in two years, but two years from now, things have changed. Did you know that now versus two years from now? So high tourist, low tourist season, getting to know the government um, bureaucracy, the social, so getting to know the people. If you take a couple of scouting trips, and you have anywhere from four to eight weeks of time, so one to two months of time, I think that's a pretty good amount of time day to day 
you start to get into a regimen where you're not on vacation or your holiday, you, it's more of just a day to day. And that helps you adjust a bit and get a feel for, okay, this is a place that we can think that we may want to move to. Or you are there and you're going, okay, well, this was on our list and it's no longer on our list. So now we've whittled it down from, let's say, four or five places to one or two. And then if you're down to one or two places, and going back to each place again and figuring out which one might be better for you, depending on your situation. Are you working or not working? Are you looking for residency, you know, just temporary residency? Do you want permanent residency? You want citizenship, the tax situation? All of those come into to play. But I would say I've met people that have moved to another country sight unseen, meaning they've never been to that country. Either they did it for work and they just showed up and they're working and they're in a new country, didn't research much, or they retired and they moved to a new country just going, oh, well, we've heard good things about this country and we've moved to it. Um, in some of those cases, it worked out, so good for them. In other cases, it was an absolute disaster, so shame on them for not doing research. But I think the last nugget, and, and those of you that are watching these types of videos and content creators like me, you like to do research and you like to get a bunch of opinions to figure out how those align or don't with your opinion and try to help you determine where you should go. But in the end, there's just a few things that I mentioned in this video that I think are helpful as you're trying to make a decision on where to go because there is no straight answer to that and places that we were thinking about going to or moving to next, um, are now off the list and it's because we spent um, a couple of months worth of time there and realized this was our next spot we were going to and we're going hmm, no not the case after being there we love traveling there we love being a tourist there but we don't really want to be a local there and as you keep going I would say keep finding ways to spend more time in the countries you want to potentially live in um, and start communicating with people already living there, whether it be uh, locals that you can find and communicate with or expats and immigrants living in that particular country. Reach out and start conversations, start asking questions, join groups, ask questions. There's no dumb questions. I guarantee if you, there are questions that we ask that may, people may think we're stupid, but everyone has to ask a bunch of questions to figure out if it's a good place to live. And I'm gonna leave you with this. When you move someplace and it's the new country, um, whether it's the greatest thing since sliced bread or it's the worst decision you ever made, realize that you can always go home. I think in most cases, most people are, are able to get home, but uh, don't commit yourself to it's this country or bust, meaning you feel like a failure if it didn't work out or it didn't work out the way you had planned it. Go someplace else move someplace else, move back home, move to another country. Um, don't put so much pressure on you. I, I've We moved from the US to Portugal. So many people I've met in the last four or five years that have now moved back to their home country, wherever that be, you know, they, it was all about Portugal. And, and the minute one thing went wrong or a few things went wrong, it's well, you know, Portugal was, that was our dream and that's no longer our dream. And that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself don't put that kind of pressure. It's a big move, it's a big investment, there's a lot to it, but it's not the end of the world move. For most people, moving to another country is not the end of the world. It's the next step in your journey of where you're going, not this is where we're all gonna live until we die. So give yourself a break, lighten up a little bit, and just know that this is the next step in your journey on where you're gonna be. Um, I know that's more of a Zen way to end up uh, the video, but please, I meet a lot of people that really beat themselves up about, you know, they moved to a place that didn't work out, they moved back, they feel like a failure, or they moved someplace else. It's just another step in learning, and it's just on to the next, uh, next big hurdle. So as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Enjoy wherever you're going to move to. Keep researching the daylights out of it, and enjoy your travels.